in the script, it's, it just says flick sticks tongue to pole. That's <laughs> all it says. There's just a direction. And I asked Bob, Bob Clark, our director, I said, uh, what do you want me to do here? And he's like, whatever comes natural. He's like, you work with Richard Pryor and Jackie Lee. said, so you can come up with anything. You just do it. And if I hate it, I'll tell you. And I said, okay. So all that stuff you see, stuck, stuck, stuck. Don't leave me. Come back. I ad-libbed all that and just came up with it. Please welcome the kids from The Christmas Story. Peter Billingsley, Scott Schwartz, Artie Rubb, Zach Ward, Ian Petrilli, and Yana Yana. Come on, give it up. Nice to see you. Welcome aboard. Always welcome. Hey, everyone. Super. Uh, you guys have microphones on your chairs? Just flick them on. Turn them on. There we go. Yeah, yours is a flip up. Check, check. All good. All good. All right. Well, what a great turnout. Check. Yeah, all right. Hey guys, this is awesome. Give it up again. Let's Come on. Everybody. This is so wonderful to have you guys here. This is great. My feet don't even hit the floor. <laughs> Mine do for once. <laughs> like the eight-year-old back in school. Hi, how are so, you? Got a couple questions for you guys, then we're going to open stuff up to the audience. Very cool. Uh, first off, Divorced. I'll, yeah. <laughs> so first off, I'd like to ask you about the latest film, uh, Christmas Story Christmas. How did that come about? What was the timing on that? How did that finally happen? This man right here. Uh, yeah, it, well, it, 39 years in the making was that one. Uh, we figured it was kind of now or never, I think. I had been developing it for about five years, and it was just... Hey, let me pot you down. It was really important to... Um, perfect. Can you guys hear me? Uh, we wanted to have the whole cast back, and we really wanted to get the story right. We wanted it to be a movie that fit with the original, uh, that was its own story, and wasn't just kind of a series of callbacks to the first one. And I know a lot of sequels have not been great for a lot of the fans for a lot of movies uh, over the years. Um, and so we just really wanted to work hard to get it right, or we just weren't going to do it. It turned out amazing. It was such a fun oh, thing. Oh, thank you. Right. It really was. Well, these, these guys were great. We appreciate that. These guys were awesome. So I got a question for all of you. Do you guys have any input on how your characters grew up uh, in the film. Boy, is that a loaded question. <laughs> well, fire away, They then. definitely did. So Pete called me when they said, okay, you got the movie. And Pete says, okay, don't cut your hair. We don't know what we're going to do yet. Don't cut your hair. And I said, okay, 1973, bar owner, Indiana, fat mustache, sideburns, Elvis, Aloha. Go over to Bulgaria. I went in the makeup room. He didn't see me yet. They did a little coloring of the gray, you know, old whatever. And he walks in, he goes, dude, they did a great job. Look at this. I said, what are you talking about? He goes, dude, you get the burns. No, no, this is mine. <laughs> like, dude, no, this is mine, dude. I grew this stuff out. So, no, so he definitely let us work on our own stuff. And we kind of knew the background of the characters, so it, it worked out great. But I, I always say this, and he knows I say this, but I always say this in a crowd. Anybody who loves the new movie, you can thank all of us but this is the driving force that got this done. And he's he the one- He made it happen. Made it happen. He's the one you he made it happen. For sure. And, and, and let's just go down the line. The rest of you, what did you bring into your characters? I mean, you know, the characters were, were there, you know, from the original, obviously. And um, we just kind of, you know, took on these guys older and how they would be in- you know, 35 years, and, and uh, you know, Peter and the, uh, the writer and creator um, really created the lives as, as they were, as you saw them, and, uh, you know, we, we did our thing to bring back what we, did, what we did in the original, but also, you know, make it new and as the characters had grown up, so... And I love we it all together. about them. He and I got together a couple of days before we left for Bulgaria. Yeah, yeah, we did. Just that to sit and start talking and you get that just camaraderie. Just to get to, yeah, because it had been a while. So it's great with Scott's arc. That is such a wonderful arc. Oh, thank you. Uh, how much of that could you put into that or how much oh, fun great. did you have they, doing they, that? You know, that they, uh, they really let us work with it. I mean, to be honest with you guys, if you, uh, we've all known each other for 40 years now and um, we're all kind of like our characters. 
I'm really kind of a jackass. So that's for um, sure. the person who changed the most was Ian, who plays Randy. And as you saw, he grew up to be own like a coffee plantation in a small country. He uh, looks like a traveling uh, sexy tra- salesman. And uh, that's the winner. I told me he's the winner. For sure. He was the winner of the characters because he yeah, travels yeah. the world. Yeah, and he yeah. does yeah. You know, the big hat. He left Cleveland. His life really took so, off. That's right. Yeah, it was awesome. It was, it was great. But they let us put in... Uh, I think for everybody who saw the film, the thing I'm proudest about, like you, like you said, Peter, it was terrifying because if we screwed it up and it was one of those horrible sequels that make you roll your eyes. Uh, Especially with all of us in it. Yeah, you, know? you guys would have yeah. murdered us. Like I never would have heard the end of it that I ruined your childhood. <laughs> right. And so they, they really did an amazing job. Yeah, I knew it was going to be good, but I didn't think it was going to be, I mean, just stellar. It I just mean, has so much heart, It right? stands I mean, up right next yeah. to the original, and that is a huge That's feat. great to hear. Did, did yeah. every, just, just show of hands, just for, as, as we say, S and giggles. Did you like I Triple Dog Dare You and the new one? Uh, Woo! <laughs> All right. It, it's a classic. So, uh, what was the audition process like? We'll go down the line. Uh, do you remember much of the audition for the and, first yeah, one? The first one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there was much of audition. I had. Um, He's pressed. I think I was 12 when I did it. And um, back then, we'd all go up for a lot of the same parts for a lot of the classic movies. Some we got, some we didn't. And I remember I got an audition and I went in for it. It was called A Christmas Story. And I went and read for Bob Clark. Bob later told me that I happened to be the first kid that he saw for the role, just the way the timing worked on the sheet. And he later told me, he said, I walked in and he's thinking, man, this is the guy. This has got to be the guy. He's like, but I'm not hiring the first kid that I see. So he went out for three months, auditioned tons of people, but I guess I just fit the criteria of what he was looking for. Then we all went up to Canada and yeah. then we did a screen test, which is never fun, where we each get to be Flick, Schwartz, Randy, and we kind of mix and match roles, and they do chemistry reads, and then they narrowed it down to our group, and it was pretty cool, because Bob, remember, turned to me and said, you've got the role if you'd like it, and I was although like, Scott, yes. Although Scott thinks he wasn't there, but he was there. Yes, <laughs> Scott was there. You were there, buddy. For, our di- for your auditions? No, Up at the no, screen in test the screen in, test Canada. in Canada. He thinks he wasn't there. This I actually like a, read Flick. An ongoing and they battle it. that we have. Yeah, it's been you, ongoing. You want me to do mine? You want me to do mine last? Go ahead. Go, go, go ahead. I had the easiest audition in the history of Hollywood for a Christmas story. I had just finished another film called Kid Co. on Friday. Thank you. Came home on Sunday. Wednesday, or that Friday, the toy had opened up in the theaters. So I had a double whammy. The finish a film and a film opens in the theaters. Wednesday, I go in to see Bob Clark. He had seen the toy. Calls me in. How you doing? We talk for a few minutes. He's like, listen, I missed lunch. You want to go have a hot dog? We were in Manhattan. We were in New York. I said, sure. We went out. We had a hot dog. We talked for a few minutes. I come back. He says, thanks for coming. You want me to read something? I saw the toy last weekend. I know you can do anything. Don't worry about it. Okay, thanks for coming. I walked seven blocks to my agent's office. She asked me what happened. I told her. She goes, he called already. You got the job. So I got the job basically over a hot dog. Yeah, it wasn't so easy for me. (laughs) Uh, I was actually doing a show on Broadway at the time. um, And um, I I was actually not sure, actually, if if the show had run, I wouldn't have been able to do the movie. Um, But... uh, you know, there's notices in, in uh, theater, and all of a sudden the notice went up, and which means you're closing. And while it was sad because I didn't know that I had the movie yet, I you know I was able to do the movie because the because the show actually closed. But I had 13 auditions for this movie. I went in the first time for the casting directors, and then I think I even went in again for them. And then I went in like almost weekly for a while. I kept going in and mixing and matching with other, other kids. And at the time, the entire time, I was reading the role of Flick. And it, even when I got to Canada for the screen test, which was m- like a couple months later, I was still reading for Flick, and then he flipped it at the last minute. So I think probably what happened was he knew he wanted you, he just didn't know for sure which role. So anyway, and you know, then we, we all mix and match together at the end of that session, and uh, the rest is history. 
But he also did Les Mis on Broadway. That was which later. Which I saw yes. him. So we actually did do a real show also. <laughs> well, Oliver was real. Uh, I was I was from Toronto, Canada. That's where I grew up. And then they were shooting there, so they had to cast some of the audition uh, roles there. I did what we call a, a cattle call, meaning meeting hundreds of kids go in. And uh, I my lines were originally Grover Dill's lines, so I was like, "Get over here, nah, your aunt Tilly," and that was it. And then next, and uh, so I did that like five or six times. Got down from three hundred kids down to ten, and then I got the job. And um, I showed up on set. I actually, I met uh, Yano when we were in the when we were in the wardrobe room. We were trying on the outfits. We, I mean, we clicked right away, and we actually got to pick out kind of our own clothing. They put out the stuff, and I liked the hat, and he liked his hat. And then uh, this isn't the original hat because it wouldn't fit my big ass head now. So, um, and then we went to set, and that's when uh, Bob met, met me in person for the first time and saw that I was a foot taller than Yano. Um, now he's a foot wider than I am. Um, and, um, and so he, he said, okay, you get his lines, he gets yours. And so we were like, ah, cool. All right. And that was how we did our thing. And now magic. So. Um, for me, it was just a, a routine audition. They just call you up and say they're casting a new holiday film and you're going to be uh, auditioning for the part of the little brother. Go get him tiger. That's basically all you got. You show up. Randy really didn't have many lines, so there wasn't much to say. Um, it was just based on personality and a couple callbacks. And then I met the director, and they sent me up to Boston to go do a screen test. And once again, no lines. It was just... <laughs> really? You went to Boston, Boston? for a yeah. screen test? I n I've never heard this. This is what's so fun about when we all get yeah. together. We yeah. all learn yeah. so we much more. We all have our own more. stories. <laughs> like, what? Boston? What? Somewhere yeah, there's the truth. Boston was a worldwide casting. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> so. And then in Iran, yeah, we were exactly. <laughs> casting the bumpus hounds directly right. out of Turkey. And it was amazing. <laughs> Uh, so, so your uh, your meal scene, how piggies eat, was that something that was part of the audition? That was part of the screen test. And Does that uh, just look like so? Like, let's yeah. throw this in. And at, at this point in time, is you know, I didn't really know much about the part, so it was just we're going to try this, <laughs> and then stick you under the sink and cry for a bit. <laughs> and it was like, you got it. So that was it. So you weren't with us in the Tor at the Toronto. Test. No. But you neither. were. No. 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 Yes, he was. I met you that this day. Is... I was scared of you that day. <laughs> he yes, if you were scared like, of me, then yes, it was definitely me. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everybody. Hey. I'm still scared. Thank you guys for coming out, spending the time with us. We really, truly appreciate it. We love all you guys. Thank you. Without you guys, we know us. So thank you. Um, uh, same kind of story as Zach went on a cattle call, 300 kids in a wide gymnasium, and I'm like, Mom, what am I doing here? I'm never going to get this job. So got a call back. A couple days later, got another call back. I met with Bob, ran the lines, pulled my mom to the side and said, if he wants the job, he's got to cut his hair. I said, nope. Oh, yeah, you had long hair. Oh, wow. So, Sorry, Mom, not cutting my hair. It's been growing for 10 years, and I'm not doing it. She said, yes, you are. <laughs> it'll, it'll grow back. This is a this is a game changer for you. So of course, gotta listen to mom, and here I am today. So, right. uh, yes, I read Scott Farkas's lines, and when we got to set, and Bob was like, "Oh yeah, let's just switch lines." We looked at each other like, "What?" I just memorized all of those lines. Now I gotta memorize all of these. Yay! Let's go, brother. So it, he was true. When we met each other, we immediately clicked, and ever since then, like our moms got along with each other, we have seen each other through the years, and for all of us, it's just it's like, it, it's a special moment to be able to get back together and spend the time with you guys, mm -hmm. because your experiences of the movie is what drives us to be who we are. So thank you again. Sure. We're gonna get you know, Yeah, go ahead. There, so I don't know if it was Bob Clark or the casting director or who did it, but of course Bob tells me I get the movie. Remember, I read no lines at my audition. So they give me the script. Now, I had done the lead and filmed the toy with Richard Pryor and Jackie Gleason. I had done this other film, Kidco. I'm the lead. Okay, fine. Now I get Christmas Story. Who am I? I'm Ralphie, right? <laughs> so I spent the next three and a half weeks memorizing the entire script. So I'm memorizing Ralphie. And we get to the, the read-through in, in Toronto, 
And, uh, okay, you know, uh, R.D., you're playing Schwartz, and Zach, you're playing Scott Farkas, and Scotty, you're playing Flick, and Peter, and I'm going, excuse me? Who the hell is that? <laughs> so then I go back, and I was working, I was scheduled for five weeks. Revisionist history. <laughs> and I had 16 lines in the script, and I'm there five weeks. You gotta be shitting me. Excuse my French, but oh my God. So I wrote on a posty note, five weeks, 16 lines, vacation. And I handed it to my father sitting behind me. I walked over to Bob. I'm like, Bob, are you shorted? Oh no, you're flick, dude. There's no question. But I did, I goes, I know that. Oh no, you're gonna kill it. Okay, fine. And it is what it ends up being. It was certainly not a vacation, let me tell you. But can you imagine anyone else in that role but him now? No, no way. Right? Not exactly. at all. Perfect. Ryan Bob, 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 Bob New. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I caught new. So we're going to get to audience questions in just a bit. I got a question, just, just a real quick one. Any fond memories of working with Melinda Dillon and Darren McGavin? They yeah. just did. Ian, do you have any memories? I mean, you did such a great scene with her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean... I, I probably one of the most fondest memories is the fact that I got to work with the mom from Close Encounters of the Third Kind. So I just kept bugging her and bugging her, like, how'd they make the alien? What did the alien look like? You know, what was it? Was, she told me the alien's name. They used to call it Mookie. It's like, oh my God. What? Yeah. <laughs> so that was, you know, and, and the, for, for me, the, the first time I really, I think when I, when we met them was in the Higbees when they came to pick us up after we got thrown out of Santa's mountain and that scene running up to her, giving her a big hug. That was our, our first scene working with her. And it was just, I just went to go hug her because it's like, you're the mom from close encounters. <laughs> so, but no, nah, she was, she was, she was a sweetheart. So yeah, she was, she was the best. And she, you know, I think if you look at her career, she really did what she wanted to do and didn't do stuff that she didn't want to do. And she kind of retired early. And I know Paul Thomas Anderson got her to do a film late. And then when it came to the sequel, she just, we, you know, we, we all kept in touch with her and um, I talked to her about it and she was kind of intrigued, but she said, I really am just done. And so she was just finished, but she was, you know, to have an on-screen mom and dad like that, when you're on location for a long time, we all had a lot of family with us, but they kind of become parents as well um, and we couldn't have asked for two better ones all right let's get some questions from the audience uh, raise your hand and uh, actually I'll work the audience too Kyle you can get this side I'll get the other side and once again thank you guys this is quite a great gift for this us. is awesome thank this you is great much. thank you and thank all of you great. you can stand up young lady it's okay yeah yeah, yeah. Um, get it <laughs> Uh, my question's actually for you two. Was there any confusion on set being actually named Schwartz and playing Schwartz? There, there's, oh man. People come, all right, uh, yeah, Schwartz, and I go, yeah, they go, no, the other Schwartz. Yeah. We actually had more confusion, I would say, on the newer movie. Because <laughs> they would always say, Schwartz walking, and we didn't know if it was like him or me or like. Wasn't their first language. Yeah, exactly. Did, is everybody here a fairly good sense of humor? Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh, have you ever seen Blazing Saddles? Okay. So we're uh -oh. in Bulgaria. <laughs> and the first day on the set, the lady comes over and grabs me and then goes and grabs him and we're walking to the set. And her vernacular is different. So she goes, okay, I'm walking to the set with Flick and Schwartz. Flick and Schwartz walking to the set. And I went, excuse me? Flick and Schwartz, and I could not wait to get back to the room to call my mother and say, Ma, we're in a Blazing Saddles movie now. We're, we're doing Mel Brooks and Flick and Schwartz. It was the funniest thing in the world. So, but yes, between me and him, it's, it's Schwartz, Schwartz. Now, how many of you come to our signing room where we signed today? Did you, did you see the sign out front? Yes, it says R.D. Rob is Schwartz, and it's spelled S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z. But somehow, it says Scott Swartz, S-W-A-R-T-Z. I'm like, uh, now wait a minute. How can you spell the name right, right but spell what? the real name wrong? <laughs> so I've told Bob, the promoter, already how I felt about that. But it was wonderful. 
All right, let's go over to this side of the room. We have a question right here. Hi, guys. Thanks for coming. Um, every line delivery moment in the movie is just perfect. Was any of it improvised, or was it all just scripted? Oh, that's me. <laughs> no, that was me, because in the script, it, it just says, flick, sticks, tongue to pole. That's <laughs> all it says. There's just a direction. And I asked Bob, Bob Clark, our director, I said, uh, what do you want me to do here? And he's like, whatever comes natural. He's like, you work with Richard Pryor and Jackie Lee. said, you can come up with anything. You just do it. And if I hate it, I'll tell you. And I said, okay. So all that stuff you see, stuck, stuck, stuck. Don't leave me. Come back. I ad-libbed all that and just came up with it. And we did it a few times. And then Bob's like, all right, give me more. Go, you know, go bigger. And I was like, went bigger. And he goes, no, the way you did it, that you do it your way. Okay. And it's stuck, you know, it's stuck, stuck, stuck in the movie, I guess you could say. I remember the whole bell rang thing was like, the th that was all improv. I remember that, that bit being. I remember the bell rang. when the weird kid walks up to me in Higby's. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I love okay. Santa. Bob was great about not telling you what he was going to do and rolling the camera. So I'm standing there thinking this is the moment they're going to cut to when I'm waiting in line. And this dude rolls up and he starts getting real close to me. <laughs> And he starts telling me what he likes. And he's like, I like the Tin Man. I'm like, uh-huh. And it was very genuine. And when I said, don't bother me, I couldn't think of why. I'm like, I'm thinking. And I was, then I think I was looked at Bob like, who is this? Like, did he sneak on the set? And Bob was just like, oh, we got it. Cut. Perfect. <laughs> he loved it. And the other big one he did, he didn't tell Melinda... Uh, when the duck came out that it was a full duck with its head on. Oh. So when it lands and you see her reaction, it's completely genuine. And then I don't think he told Darren that he was going to chop the head off. So he, <laughs> And we're just laughing hysterically at it. So he was really great at kind of setting up that stuff. Okay, we got... Uh, let's do uh, three or four. You got a question too, Tim? We have three questions. Let's knock them out on this side of the room. We have three here. Then we'll go back over to you. Besides winning. Oh, I was curious. Oh, what is your guys' favorite Christmas movies? A Christmas Story. <laughs> Kiss Ass. And then Elf. And then Love Actually. And hi, guys. How are you doing? Uh, my question is, do you have a, a favorite scene that didn't go right? Like a blooper that... You know, just continue to you just continue to film. Your scene with your mom. When you did the uh, eating like a piggy, didn't your mom have to come in? Yeah, they brought my mom in to try to get me to laugh. <laughs> and what did she do to get you to laugh? Did it work? Uh, fish heads, fish heads, fish. Yeah, oh yeah, she sang the fish head song. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't getting the reaction perfect that he wanted. In right. his close up. Well, he wanted he wanted that natural laugh. Right. And then your mom's like, "Oh, I can make him laugh." Right. So she would come in and just do whatever like she sang that I think the fish heads song. Fish heads, fish heads. And she'd tell <laughs> fart jokes. And, and then he remembers starts rolling. That. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember, remember because I my reaction was like the old man's, which was, hey, what is going on over here? <laughs> Bob would it even just try. just kept rolling and rolling. I remember the, the, he must have shot like three hours on that. Yeah. It, it took a long time. And Bob would even try tickling me under the table. <laughs> and they would just, <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's Did not you say Bob thing. went under the table? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which this does not sound up. right, man. Not <laughs> Come on, no. let's keep it PG. On, when, uh, PG. when we were beating him up in the, uh, in the alleyway, <laughs> and then I grabbed uh, RD, and I, I was wrenching his arm, and he was like, uncle, uncle. And you get, you know, it wasn't there. And Bob was like, you know, make him get there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you goose it up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then so when you hear him go, uncle, uncle, hey, yo! <laughs> that's me hurting him. <laughs> and you can see it in his face because he's got that like, ah! <laughs> which it was, he was very scared. real yeah. doing the movie. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. It was like, I was the biggest kid there and uh, I won. <laughs> Bob, Bob kept us away. Yeah. Myself, yeah. Peter, and, and R.D. He kept and the three of us together the and the two of them together. And the yeah. two bullies because they yeah. didn't want us to be friends yeah. with Schwartz them. wasn't the only victim here. Well, we yeah. had the arm scene, too, yeah. in the back out. 
and that was real too, mind you. Oh, and he it hit was you hard. Out there. Yeah, yeah you exactly. Was nice. He didn't have to hit me hard, but after the sixteenth take, Man. my arm was like blue. Oh, and that uh, hurt. What would Brando do? Man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> take it like a man, right? <laughs> man, man. There was oh, there was man. also one. Everyone was like, "Oh, you did a great job crying when they threw the snowball." I was like, "Yeah." because they threw a snowball into my face. <laughs> it was like, it hurt, and I started crying. <laughs> I was like, yes, thank you for the compliment. One more question from this side of the room, then bounce over there. So it has some pretty iconic lines in the first film. Uh, Deans have a favorite line uh, that's pretty quotable for me. I like the Fred Gile one. That's my personal favorite, actually. Yeah, Fred Gile. You love Fred Gile. You know I love yeah. Fred Gile. Not a finger. It was... <laughs> Yeah, I think the the dad had all, all the bells. The dad uh, owns the best. Yeah, he really yeah, does. for sure. Yeah. All right, let's rock to the other side of the room and get some uh, questions. So that kind of was my question, but another question I have was: so obviously, like the Christmas Story house is the actual house in Cleveland. Um, when was the last time you guys were there, or like your best memory, like revisiting it after um, like filming? I was never there. been. Never been. Uh, I've, I was there last year. I, I raised money for Alzheimer's. Um, my dad's got it. So if any of y'all have, have family with Alzheimer's, uh, but let, well, thank you. Let's support Alzheimer's Aso uh, or Association. If you have any family with Alzheimer's, the Alzheimer's Association is great. Reach out to them. They can give you a lot of services. Yeah, I was there last year. They're awesome. Uh, I remember when Scott, uh, Scotty was there, and I was there. I don't know if uh, I think Ian might have been, but when the house first opened, do you remember that? Yeah, oh, five yeah. oh six. It was a long time ago, and it was crazy because you go like, "Ah, oh, the house is opening. That's cool, whatever." And we're inside, and I walked outside for a second, and literally there were ten thousand people lined up down the street, and I was like. Like, it was terrifying, dude. It was awesome, though, just that response. So. You couldn't see the street. No, there was no really? sidewalk. No, it was there was no packed. sidewalk. All no, heads. You look to the left, it was all heads. Oh, it was crazy. Dead wow. straight across the street was all heads. To the right was all pet. I mean, it was, well, you know. Felt like a beetle. I'm glad they have a new owner. Yeah. All right. So, Another question. Uh, let's go over to uh, this side of the room. So, Sir, if you're not going to do it like Randy, you can't wear that costume. He was a friend of mine, so you get this right. <laughs> yeah. Get some. Oh, yeah. No. Woo! Now listen here. <laughs> Little man up on that stage. I am coming in to bring it. But <laughs> nice. Thanks. All right, what's yeah. this question? Nice. Well done, sir. No, so, uh, my question is for the, uh, the leg lamp scene. Did they keep it authentic and actually keep it a surprise, or did any of you know what was coming in that package? It's a good question. I, I kind of I remember it being somewhat of a surprise. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I remember him saying, like, really go for it when you touch the leg. And I'm like, <laughs> right. well, that's kind of weird. He's like, just make it like it's kind of like you're really fired up about it. And he's uh, nine. And I'm like, uh, yeah, the character's nine. I was 12 at the time. So, I mean, again, yeah, but I do remember thinking, something like, gosh, is this going to work? This is a very strange object, but uh, it was obviously really cool. I, I just remember I, I, I got sick. That's when I got food poisoning. <laughs> right, yeah, oddly, right after the, the piggy scene. And... Uh, uh. Then we had to uh, sh uh, show up on the set, so I was I was sick that day, so I don't think I even really cared what was in the box. <laughs> that, but just, That's why you just look scared of it. <laughs> yeah, <which is> perfect. <laughs> do you guys remember anything? Was there a, a big movie premiere for it when it came out? And uh, do you guys remember anything no. about it? I, I wasn't I mean, invited. <laughs> no, we, we, I mean, we, yeah, I wasn't there. If there was. was, they were more regional. I think back then. Oh, I remember okay. doing when you'd have to go region by region, mm -hmm. and you do the roundtables with the press. They actually have a, a video of the premiere. It's on YouTube in and Cleveland, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're there. I think there was Bob. one in Cleveland. Yeah, oh, really? I'm not in it because I wasn't invited. Were you there? I was. No, yeah. it's cool. We just had. We just I don't had think a couple any of us were there. At MGM. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Peter. Peter got the only invitation. Any of that. 
I you, saw it. I saw it with my folks opening weekend and my yeah, grandmother that's how I saw it. and friends in, just in Central the New Jersey. We just went to the theater. Yeah. So I was curious of your reactions when you did first see the movie on the screen in a full audience. Were you surprised with just how incredibly over the top everybody enjoyed the film? No, they it did. wasn't a massive they success. Did. It wasn't you know, a massive I mean, success. That's, that's strange. Like, eh. Yeah, I mean, I remember but liking I remember the it, thinking really that was cool. It. But yeah. back then, you know, the movie did okay. It wasn't a world beater. wasn't a bomb. Oh, okay. It did fine. Yeah. But then that was it. There was no video, no cable. It certainly wasn't streaming. Right. So it was like, all right, well, that's it. And then just slowly. Home video. Yeah, yeah there was were, no conversation about it. It wasn't like no. people were talking about it. My experience, you guys have heard this, so I'll do it fast. I went, I went to go see the movie with this girl I had a crush on in grade eight. I'm from Canada, so we say, say, call it grade eight, not eighth grade. Her name was Mimi Fotley. She was French-Canadian. She had that hot French-Canadian girl accent. You guys, all the guys know what I'm talking about. We went to go see the movie, and the whole time I was like so nervous. I wanted to hold her hand or like put my arm, but I was scared and I was nervous. We walked outside. And she had a, the short haircut, because this was the 80s. So there was like, you know, 99 to Nif balloons. Very cool. And so I'm standing there, and I'm like, so, hey, so did you like the, what did you think? You like the movie? Did you, well, you think it was cool? And she goes, no, I don't like this so much, and leaves. <laughs> and leaves. I've never heard and this. And gets on the subway, like, no, I don't like this so much, bye-bye, and I'm gone. <laughs> and I'm left standing there like, oh, okay, I was in a movie, and okay, whatever. Like, that was my level wow. of stardom. Wow. Nope. And I think it, uh, yeah, that out. was, that, an out, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it broke my heart. Yeah, it was great. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think that about this film makes it so multi-generation? People, the kids watching it, still watching it. 24-hour marathon, seeing it on television. What elements of this movie you think made it the classic that it is? I don't know. The biggest probably, and you guys, I'm sure, hear from the fans as well, but the biggest thing I think I like, most consistently hear is, that's my family. Yep. There's a relatability in the yes. family. And it felt like, I don't know, for the first time, it was like a real family. You know, that dad is one wrong comment away from snapping, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but the mom's there to kind of keep oh, keep the peace. But it's, it's, it's kind of messy. The brothers are at each other's throats. But at its core, there's a lot of love. You know, and Art. so you feel like, okay, that's real. They're not trying to make it saccharine or dark for dark's sake. And, you know, it just leads up to what I think is all of our Christmases. You want it to be great. You gotta be around people sometimes you don't wanna be around. You gotta grin and bear it, but then Christmas morning comes and there's kind of a little magic in the air. And so, like, it just retains those feelings, and I, at least I always hear that it felt for the first time like a family that was theirs. Yeah. Yeah, or and, and, just, you know, everybody has or had a Red Rider in their life at one point in time that they've been wanting to get. Yeah, I mean, it comes out in 83, and you've got uh, adults in their 40s, 50s, 60s who grew up during that time frame when life was much simpler and much kinder and much nicer. And they sort of gravitated to the film, and then, of course, they show it to their kids, and it's mom and dad showing you this wonderful, nice, loving movie, and it's very heartfelt and okay. And then you go to the next generation down. So it's now it's like we've got you know folks here that it's is the third generation, and their their kids are eight, ten, twelve, fourteen years old, and it's the third. But they're being exposed to the film by their parents, their grandparents, and they they find a comfortability in in a wonderful household. You know, and lo lots of love. And I think the 24 hours, once it became the marathon, made such a huge difference because not only were you playing it at Christmas, you were playing it, right, all day. So it was like, yeah, we became your family, you know? So we were always there, and then, and it just became everyone's tradition, and we keep hearing that all the time as we do these, as we do these cons and these shows, um, that, you know, it, it got passed down from generation to generation in, the, in that respect, and hopefully it keeps going. But that's your job to keep going. Yeah, yeah. keep it going. Yeah. You know? Yeah, For one thing I'd like to say to everybody, if you've never really took the time to listen from the very first word that Gene Shepard spoke, you kind of get stuck the whole way, because he speaks to everybody in the first sentence. It's just amazing. Like if you, because typically it's on in your living room. You just hear it in the background, 
or for those of us who love to actually sit and watch it, <laughs> then it really does resonate all the way through in the transitions from scenes to the kids to the classroom to all of these crazy experiences. It just, it resonates. Well, at least it resonates for me on almost every aspect of how I was raised to. All right, let's get one or two more questions. Uh, let's do this one and then you. Hi. Um, they, you kind of semi-stole my question, but um, I remember the year it came you? out at the 20... 24 oh. hour marathon. Um, 96. Yeah, 96, 97. I was working nights in the ICU. And I remember being so excited, and we turned it on in every TV oh, in that's all great. 18 bedrooms. And I, I remember thinking, oh God, wouldn't it be great if it happened again next year? And like, did you guys think it would stay 24 hours of a Christmas story forever? Did you think, no, like, no. oh shoot? I Where was apologizing to people. Fail? I was like, I have nothing to do with that. Yeah, Sorry. he didn't even know. It's like, geez, that was weird, huh, guys? That was weird, right? <laughs> I, had, I had a friend call me up and say that his uh, his his uh, stepdaughter won't stop watching the movie, and I said, we'll just take the video cassette out of the VCR. He's like, no, it's on cable. It won't. <laughs> like, when do they start doing this? It won't end. <laughs> No, I mean, they had, no. they had done the marathon twice before. It's a Wonderful Life, did okay the first year, and the second year didn't do as good, and that was the end of that. Then they did Wizard of Oz, and it did okay the first year, and the second year it just tanked, and they went, well, that's the end of that. So uh, earlier that year, I think 96, Ted Turner was buying the MGM Film Library for TBS and TNT. Needed two movies. His secretary was a big fan. And he had never seen it. So she brought on her VHS tape to the office. And Ted Turner and Jane Fonda watched it and went, oh, this is lovely. So they bought it. And then he, his secretary of 25 years, what do we do? Well, throw it on a marathon. We only paid $250,000 for this movie. We'll at least get our money back. All right. They did it. Did okay. Well, we'll, we'll try it again. And the ratings went up. And they went, I wait a minute. Okay. And, and then up, the third year, up, the ratings up. went up. And by years five and six, they were at 35 and 40 and 50 million households across the country. Now it's a cash cow. Now they just make 20 million. How many a year. years going is it? It's been so, since 96? 26. Wow. wow. 26, 27. That's amazing. So, yeah. And it's, it's again, as Yano said, That's you we guys. thank you guys because. Yes. Thanks. I'm the me and him are the two Jews. We don't watch. Come on, oh, you go to something. Uh -oh. Come on, <laughs> you know. But yeah, why somebody watch something else? Whatever. But you guys just keep on keeping on. And one final question. By the way, thank you so much for doing this. Oh, thank oh, you. This is just pleasure. Yeah. yeah. It's a Comic Con dream come true. Got our final question, and it's going to be the best question of the day. Well, I hope so. My name's Charlie. Uh, growing up in New York City, '60s and the '70s, Gene was an absolute fixture to us and the Gene Shepard radio show was amazing and his source material was so great. Any memories you'd like to share about Gene Shepard because he was brilliant. You go first. Okay, I can share one. Yeah, Gene was great. We got to meet him. They had worked, Bob Clark and Gene Shepard worked together for close to 12 years to get the movie made. Nobody wanted to make it. Uh, Bob had to put his salary into the movie, agree to do other movies. So by the time they got there, they were really well prepared and passionate. And I remember a couple times I'd be doing a scene, Bob would go to the bathroom and then Gene would run up to me and he's like, you need to do it a little more like this. You need to say it like this. Bob would come out, see it and scream, get away from my actor. And then run up to me and say, what did he say to you? I was like, I don't know, I don't know. He said more like this. They did it because they cared. There was just a great passion with him and Gene was around Bob read the narration for me off camera. Um, and then Gene obviously did it afterwards. But it was just a couple guys that really cared, had tried a very long time, and it was a great lesson of just being a part of a process. They didn't expect the film to be great. I did, there was no hype on the set. It was, I always call it a take your lunch pail to work movie because they was just, they were grinding. They were just great, grateful to have the chance to get it made. There yeah. was, there was, one instance at Higby's, because other than that, I didn't see Gene Shepard at all. Yeah, we had to read through. He was at the Gene school. I don't around, remember. Yeah, he was, I remember him around the school. All right. I remember the Higby's. And they were having a little bit of a, a, a break, something. And somebody asked Gene to describe a Bic pen. 
This man was the master of the English language. I stood there and listened to him describe this big pen for 15 minutes. I think, how the hell can he come up? But he was just a master of the English language, you know. And even being in New York, I did hear him a few times on, on the radio. It wasn't WWR because that was TV. Um, I don't remember which station he was on, but, you know, he, he was a extremely uh, intelligent man. And, of course, just, it just I'll just throw the little tidbit in, if any of you know, but the original publishing of anything Christmas Story is in the December 1965 Playboy. It is in that issue. That I have look a couple at it for the articles, if you'd like. <laughs> Nothing else. Well, thank you guys so much for coming out and doing this. Thank hey, you all hey, for having you. us. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank have you. a very Merry Christmas, guys. Merry Merry Give it up. Kwanzaa, uh, Hanukkah, you. whatever you want. This is John Glover, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Lionel Luther recommends it. Ah, have some fun. Follow your fandom.